Welcome to today's webinar. We are going to begin in just a couple of minutes. We are still seeing some people log on and we want to just give them a chance to get settled. So we will be back a couple minutes after the hour to get going. All right, good morning, good afternoon to everybody, um, depending on where you are tuning in from. We are gonna get started with today's webinar. We're gonna be talking about our newest commercial energy storage integration with Sokomec and modeling uh, those energy storage systems in our ETB developer platform. We are really excited to share this with you and to get going. So a few housekeeping items just before we get started. We are recording this webinar and it will be sent out after the webinar to everybody who registered. Whether you attended or not, you will get the email with all of this good stuff in it. We do save our Q&A until the end of the webinar, but please feel free to chat your questions over using the chat box um, at the bottom of your GoToWebinar screen there. Um, and we will try to get to as many as we can at the end. All right, so today's speakers, we have a great lineup for you, um, include Matt Simo, he is the Regional Manager at Energy Toolbase, Chuck Rames, he is the Director of Marketing for Sokomec Energy Storage. We are also joined by Kevin Mulvey, he is the Manager of Technology and Product Operations at Energy Toolbase. He's been pretty instrumental, um, just like everybody on this call, in coordinating this integration launch on the hardware and the software side. A lot of work went into this to ensure accuracy and um, when you guys are modeling projects and just to ensure that our users have the best and most seamless experience when modeling and deploying projects with Sokomec and Energy Toolbase. And we're really excited to have the Sokomec team on with us today. So before I um, pass it over to Chuck, I just want to talk a little bit about this integration with Sokomec. So now ETB developers, when you log in, you will see the Sokomec logo when adding an energy storage system to your proposal. This means that now you can model and run those dispatch simulations and analysis that are going to represent exactly how a Sokomec energy storage system that is paired with our Acumen Energy Management System control software will be operating in the field once it is deployed. So we've been working on this integration for a while, um, a couple of years, and are happy to have these top of the line energy storage systems integrated within our platform and with our control software. And we hope and we know this is going to be one of the most trusted and reliable products on the market. Um, it's important for us um, as energy tool base as a team to give our users as many options as possible to model those storage projects to hopefully help you all close deals and deploy more storage. So we have Chuck Rames with us here. He is going to talk about Sokomex energy storage systems and what developers need to know about these um, systems as they start modeling them in the platform. So Chuck, I am going to pass it over to you and share my screen so you can show yours. Thank you, Tracy. Good to be here today. So let's see, we'll show my screen. Screen one. Looks and, good. Okay, excellent. 
So Tracy said, my name is Chuck. I'm the Director of Marketing for Energy Storage for Selcomec. And it's my pleasure to share with you this range of energy storage systems. So they're all outdoors. We call them SunSys Hybrid Energy Storage, come in two sizes, large and extra large, from as small as 50 kilowatts uh, up to 500 kilowatts for the large, and then the extra large multiples of 500 up to, up to multi-megawatts. So what I want to do is, is just spend just a few minutes introducing the company, uh, which goes to bankability and strength of warranty, and then spend most of my time talking about the product set. I think there's a chat window for questions, so do type your questions in. Looking forward to answering questions um, as we move along here. So the company at a glance, we're almost a century old, electrical like equipment manufacturer specializing in low voltage, you know, below 1,500 volts. Century old, three and a half thousand employees, 12 factories, uh, half a billion uh, a year in revenue. And as a family owned, privately held company, we have the freedom to do a lot of R&D. We plow 10% of top line revenue back into R&D. So we do a small set of things, but we go deep and we do them really well. So those of you in photovoltaics probably already know or maybe use Socomec, Circo, PPE disconnects. Uh, we're a major manufacturer of power switching components. Uh, we do digital power monitoring, dominant in our home country, expanding into the US. Power conversion, we've been making UPSs, uninterruptible power supply since, you know, since moon landing days like 1969. And for the last decade, energy storage. And of course, we have a large services team to support the UPSs and storage in the field. So if you look at, you know, these core competencies plus batteries, you can see that energy storage is not a tangential thing, but rather core to what we do. And that's how our executive and ownership look at this, that we're in the energy storage game. For the log run. Okay, uh, you'll talk to some of my colleagues that have a Powersmiths email address of like your Sulcomec, what's Powersmiths? So this is our 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 org chart for Canada and the US. So uh Sulcomec group uh there in Boston uh oversees power smiths outside of Toronto, bolt switch outside of Chicago, and continental control systems outside of Denver. All of these people are are part of Sulcomec. You see that about 10% of our of our staff is in North America. Okay, so that's the company in a nutshell. Let's look at the hardware. So again, Sunsys Hybrid Energy Storage um, from small to large. Let's look at the hardware set. That's what we're going to be moving towards. This is why customers are interested in all this. Uh, it's a very flexible platform. It creates a lot of variety without a lot of complexity in the hardware set. We've got all the up-to-date certifications. It's been designed to be easy and fast to install and easy to maintain. All of this goes towards you know, the underlying reason where most of your customers are buying energy storage, which is the thing has to pay for itself and then some. So uh, there's a focus on uh, ROI and total cost of ownership. Here's the hardware set. So let's, uh, two pictures and one slide. Let's focus on the left side. Sunsys Hybrid Energy Storage Large. There's two cabinets here. There's a converter cabinet on the right where all the power conversion happens and battery cabinets on the left. So this uh, would be a, it was, it was put delivered to the site in three big cabinets. This can be scaled from as small as 50 kilowatts up to 500 kilowatts. And from one battery cabinet is 186 kilowatt hours. Six battery cabinets would be a little better, better than a megawatt, 1,116. Um, more about the size ranges on a later slide. Um, and you see the human figure for scale, right? So you get some idea of how big this thing is. And then the extra large, basically building blocks of what you see here, 500 kilowatts by one megawatt hour is what's pictured. Four of these battery cabinets for this system make one megawatt hour. If we had eight battery cabinets, we'd have two megawatt hours. And uh, the battery cabinets are the same height. They're about not quite eight feet high, they're about four feet front to back to give you some idea of the, the scale of this thing. Battery cabinets are four feet side to side. So that's just a high level glance at the pieces. Next, the next four or five slides, I wanna look at the converter cabinet for the smaller one, the converter cabinet for the XL, and then the battery cabinets for both. And then we'll go deeper into the, the, the battery supplier, the battery chemistry, 
and uh, then we'll look at uh, off-grid operations, and that should that should take up all the time allotted. So this is the Sokomec converter cabinet. You see, all of our names are very <laughs> practical and to the point. C cab means converter cab. So how big is the piece? It's uh, it's a meter square, or meter across the front, a meter three deep, or if you prefer, three by four feet. Um, it's about seven and a half feet tall. Um, so we open up the uh, weather tight door, and I want to call your attention to the six dark rectangles in the center of the cabinet. Each of those is the front face of a 50 kilowatt, three stage, fully bi directional, grid forming, grid following converter module. And depending on how many of those we put in the cabinet, we get different kilowatt ratings. So if there's just one, it's 50. If it's three, it's 150. Five is 250, six is 300, and so forth. If we put two cabinets side by side, we can, you know, we can get bigger. So it's a very modular system, and combined with the uh, with the batteries, it lets us get a system that's the right size for your job. So if a uh, energy tool based developer comes back and says, you know, the right size for this thing is going to be 200 kilowatts by about 750 kilowatt hours, we can do that. We don't need to sell you a 500 and derate it or you know, try to make a big peg fit in a small hole. We've got more modularity here. And this is how we do that on the converter side. It's very self-contained. Um, AC and DC disconnects in the cabinet, DC landing lugs in the cabinet, climate controls, it's all self-contained. So um, just a couple things to call out. It's, it's NEMA 3R. And uh, not on this slide, but it is uh, all the latest UL certifications, 1741 SA, SB, and the CRD, um, uh, and fits the special interconnection rules for California and Hawaii. Uh, just a little bit more of what's in the box. You see how self-contained it is. So the power modules, if they would fail, pardon me, let's go back one. Uh, they're simply slide in, slide out, made for rapid service. Again, that comes from our UPS architecture. Um, all of the control computers right inside, the energy tool base edge device rides inside. Um, it's, a, it's a very self-contained system, but it's designed for uh, very straightforward repairs on the field if need be. This is the bigger sibling, the 500 kilowatt, um, whereas the smaller one is, uh, designed and manufactured in Europe. This one is done by our North American team as a larger system because there are more requirements for large commercial industrial storage in North America. So whereas the previous one is UL and IEC, this one's UL only, it's a 500 kilowatt liquid cooled converter block. That's from our friends at EPC Power in Poway, California. And we build the rest of everything all around here. Uh, the enclosure, the isolation transformer, uh, the figure safe door within a door cabinet with all the computers, the liquid to air heat exchanger on top, and the DC combiners are uh, the closed door on the right. So it looks like three boxes. It's three doors, but it's one cabinet. Delivers in one piece, set it down, bolt it down. It goes in pretty quick. Uh, and again, like it's a smaller sibling, California Rule 21, Hawaiian Electric Rule 14H. Um, we have the uh, the CRD, which we should be able to connect in California without a net generation output meter that will save money and save time. And like the smaller one, uh, available both grid following and grid forming. So this can, this is a good, both of them are a good fit for projects that require backup power or resiliency or what have you. Um, this is the battery with the doors open. So again, how big is the cabinet? So it's four feet by four feet, 1.3 meters by 1.3 meters. Uh, again, it's a little overhead high. And there's two doors. Um, you can see the right one opens up to expose the, the battery cabinet. There's a, there's a smaller door on the left that opens up to the, un uncovers uh, the chillers and uh, the, the controls. So the first thing I want to point out is that this delivers all assembled. It's factory assembled. The battery modules in place, the wires are landed, the cooling pipes are fitted, the coolant tank is filled and tested. Again, it's set it down, land the wires, bolt it down. There's not that much to install this. Um, for the smaller system, the L, we uh, specify four battery modules. 
for the bigger sibling, we specify six. There's clearly a room for eight. So why do we use four and six? It's the voltage window of the converters. So uh, just like PV modules, battery modules in series, voltage adds. So this adds up into the low 800s. This adds up into the low 1100s. And uh, these are uh, the right voltage windows for their respective converters. Now, I want to call out some things that are, uh, I think, very interesting about the battery. And it goes to the heart of what you can sell to your, to your customers. First of all, they're lithium iron phosphate batteries. So there's no resource constrained materials here, no nickel, no manganese, no cobalt. Uh, but there's also no conflict minerals here. So there's a more ethical supply chain possible. Uh, the second thing is, while lithium iron phosphate batteries are inherently a safer battery, what you really want to hang your hat on is that they have, have a very good result on the large scale fire test. So the fire test here is the full battery cabinet, actually two of them, one next to the other, uh, electrically and thermally tortured until a runaway uh, is initiated. And then the test is what happens in the next two hours. Uh, and for these, it's pretty uneventful. It just slowly cools off. So it's a very thermally stable battery system. There is a fire suppression system uh, in the top of the cabinet. It's uh, passed all the UL tests or all the UL test results are without that. Uh, but if your customer says, is there a fire suppression system? You can say, yes, there's one in there. Uh, we talked about it being ready to, to, to install liquid cooled um, half C battery, the two hour batteries. Uh, but I wanna call out this long life thing down here because this is unusual. And this is where, you know, because nameplate kilowatt hours is not what generates revenue what generates revenue is lifetime throughput so if these systems are cycled daily 100 percent full charge full discharge every day seven days a week every week of the year for 20 years we would still not be at end of life that'd still be a couple of years after that so in that cycling regime, there would be about five and a half megawatt hours lifetime per kilowatt hour nameplate. It's a lot of energy throughput. So when we're looking at applications like uh, solar plus storage time of use shifting, where we're going to charge the discharge nearly fully more days than not, or in some cases every day, uh, this battery chemistry and this battery lend itself to those kinds of applications. Okay, for those not familiar with CATL, Contemporary Amperex Technology Company Limited, they are perhaps the largest manufacturer of lithium ion batteries on the planet. And uh, this is a photo of their main manufacturing campus. Everything in this American football shaped polygon by the river's edge, that's all their campus. So normally in the press releases, you just see the office building, uh, but it's the whole thing. So uh, they're big. There are 25 going on 30,000 employees. Uh, they're publicly traded. They're profitable. Uh, they are universally acknowledged to be a tier one battery supplier. And we are happy to be their, uh, their partner for commercial and industrial size projects. So uh, safety is always a big concern. They have the largest testing lab in the country. Uh, but again, the, the test everyone is concerned about is the large scale fire test and uh, very good results. So just at a high level, let's look again at the configurations and just you know get a handle on how this works. So say we go through energy tool-based developer and it comes back and says the ideal system size for this particular job is 150 kilowatts, two hours. So we could do that. We would uh, have one converter cabinet populated with three converter modules. So there's 150 kilowatts and then two liquid-cooled battery cabinets that are 186 kilowatt hours each, two of them makes 372. So it's a 150 two hour. And that's just an example of how that goes together. Uh, the bigger one, again, you're usually working with multiples of what you see here, the 500 kilowatt converter cabinet on the left, four battery modules on the right. Uh, the wiring all runs through watertight rodent proof uh, cable trays under the front comes back up inside. So uh, that's the usual building block on the bigger system. This 
want to linger on this one a little bit. This is the summation of everything that I want to show you. I've only got 20 slides, so uh, we're almost to the end of this. If we look at the horizontal axis, kilowatt hours, so one battery cabinet, 186, two, 372, like we just saw, three is half a megawatt hour, six is a megawatt hour. So lots of granularity of the batteries. And then granularity from as small as 50 to as big as 550 on the converter by steps of 50, all 32 of these yellow squares with a you know hours in them um, are are UL certified. All of these uh, are are available to you. So you know we gave the example of the math comes back that we need something uh, you know 200 kilowatts uh, by about three and a half hours. Okay, there's 744. Maybe we need more than four hours uh, for some requirement. Okay, we go to 930. There's all these variations, so you can get the right size to maximize the project economics for your job. For the bigger ones, as we've explained, it's uh, two and four hour building blocks of 500. And then you just start paralleling those together and we get some really large systems. There are very few commercial industrial systems that go much beyond uh, you know, four or five megawatt hours. So this should cover almost all of the size range of commercial industrial projects. And we wanted that kind of modularity because we know it's that modularity is closely aligned for to bring it in the, the best project economics. So standards, just wanted to touch on this real quickly. Large scale fire tests we've talked about. There are component level standards for both batteries and converters. These are met, these are met at the at the very latest versions of both of these. And then all of these together combine to make a system level safety standard, um, which is somewhat confusing because it sounds a lot like the battery test method. But it's UL9540 without the A is the certification for the energy storage systems. There's two generations of this. There's an earlier generation from 2016 that did not require large scale fire safety testing and a newer version from last year that does. Um, and it is a shared standard for both Canada and the US. So uh, it's the exact same standard for both countries. So um, the most demanding jurisdictions should be looking for UL9540. Um, and they're, they're almost always looking for the newest version. So as you're comparing spec sheets, make sure that you're always looking for the 2020 or second generation of this thing. So there's all, all the up-to-date certs. The last, oh, uh, one on installation and then on to backup power. Uh, easy to install. You can both lift them from the top with lifting eyes, a uh, crane or a sling around the grade all. Or if you're working on a level concrete pad, uh, there are forklift uh, slots underneath to lift them up. So you can move them from above or below. Uh, we do provide drilling plates so you can properly drill the spots for the hilti bolts that anchor it down. Uh, Everything else is uh, is integrated. There, we made sure there was lots of space inside to, uh, you know, cold day, stiff cables, uh, cold fingers, uh, easy to uh, get the cables to go where they're supposed to go. And we provide the DC wiring between the batteries and the converters. And again, uh, it's a steel waterproof, animal proof cover or, uh, you know, enclosure that, that they run through. Okay, last topic uh, is resiliency or backup power, or whatever your customers want to call it, you know, I've got PV and batteries, will the system run my building when the power is down? Um, we've been building microgrids for a decade. We have expertise in this area. So when you're talking to customers, uh, you know, with developer, we can quantify what the benefits are, uh, the returns for on-grid service. The economic benefits of off-grid service really comes from the customer for their building. You know, they'll understand what is lost or spoiled or damaged if the grid goes down for, you know, hours or as we saw in California last last year, you know, for days. And of course, hurricanes could knock us out uh, for weeks or, you know, large wind events in the Midwest took out Iowa and parts of Illinois for like four weeks or somewhere or two ago. So uh, your customer can figure out that. But the main point is whatever the values are of having power during the grid outage is added to the return on investment of on grid operations uh, with Acumen EMS from Energy Tool Base. Uh, how do we do this? 
So this is a, uh, Tracy, if I'm running low on time, stop on my foot, but um, we have a grid forming energy storage system. There will need to be, there will always need to be additional components to make the building or part of the building island. Uh, so what's over here is our standard product. What's in this gray box in the center is something that either you, know, you or one of your partner companies may build, or you can ask us to build it, or you can ask us for a little design help because you're building it. I just wanna call out that whatever is in this box is not part of the energy storage system but it's something we can help you with. So uh, just imagine, you know, the mains fail. What we have is uh, there's a relay that says that the grid is down. It opens a motorized breaker. There's data communication to our control computer, and we'll bring the we'll we'll uh, uh, switch operating modes and operate the system in off grid mode. Uh, so what's in this gray box is different the size depending on the interconnection of the building, the sizes of a half dozen different things. So every, every one of these is a little bit different, but we'll help you design whatever this is for your project. That is, those are the high points for a 15 minute uh, run through. So Tracy, do we have questions? Um, we had a couple um, and you know, we usually save them till like the very end of the presentation, oh. if you're good with that. Uh, but we did I'll have a couple be, that we'd I'll, like I'll, to see. It's, it's your show. I'll be happy to wait <laughs> and answer when you're ready. Okay, awesome. We will save Q&A till the very end, and then we will get to those questions. So um, just hang tight. And I will okay. uh, give the uh, screen to Matt Simo now. Thank you. Thank you, Chuck. Right. Thanks, Chuck. That was awesome. Thank you so much uh, again for joining us today. And, and thanks, Trace, for passing on over. Um, well, everybody, thank you so much for joining today. Um, my name is Matt Simo, Regional Manager here at Energy Toolbase. And uh, for those of you who might be joining that aren't quite familiar with Energy Toolbase, quick overview of just what we do. Uh, we are a SaaS company specializing in the avoided cost analysis or savings of solar PV and energy storage opportunities. Um, in addition to that, we provide the software to actually operate and monitor energy storage plus PV assets in the field. Um, that's a lot of what I'm going to get into um, today, just kind of showing you how these integrations work, uh, a little bit more about ETB monitor and our acumen controls. So before we get started, um, just wanted to provide a quick overview of how Energy Toolbase plays a role in this integration. So over the past few years, Energy Toolbase has been getting more and more traction in the EMS market. And as we've developed and deployed um, our energy management system called Acumen EMS, um, it's going to be compatible to a lot of hardwares out there in the market, um, almost hardware agnostic. Um, we provide that with AI learning to intelligently refine and improve the way in which your assets operate in the field, especially as, as conditions may change and evolve over the life of that asset. So we're super excited to be working with Socomac and launching our integration. And without further ado, let's dive into that. So as what you're seeing now is our main landing page to Energy Toolbase. I'm looking at a project here that I kind of developed for this uh, example. And before we dive in, let's just take a look at the energy profile and just kind of see what we're working with. So Mainly, I just wanted to look at here where we're working off an ALTOU rate, and more importantly, just a high-level overview of the energy profile that we're kind of working with. And I designed this to be um, pretty spiky. And the reason I did this is because I want to showcase how the Socomic hardware and Acumen uh, controls will identify and shave these peaks down as efficiently as possible and levelize out that net consumption. So as you can see here, um, high-level seasonal overview, nice and spiky, even on the weekends. You can see a lot of big spikes here occurring. And as we kind of build out this system, we're going to see that um, energy storage strategy kind of come to life and shave this down. So diving into the actual project here, a quick overview of what was developed. We do have a PV plus storage opportunity here. On our PV side, we have a 51.5 uh, kilowatt power rating on the PV side. And I went ahead and loaded in the 100 kilowatt 186 kWh Socomac um, large system here. And I did that for a reason. I did that so we can show how it can be scalable and how our uh, energy tool-based optimization engine will work alongside of this integration. So as we dive into the integration, um, for those of you who might be brand new to energy tool-based as well, 
okay? You're not gonna get access to the integrations automatically. So if you are a first time user or brand new to the energy storage arm of Energy Toolbase's product suite, um, you're gonna see that these are all grayed out, okay? So all you need to do is just go on over to the Socomec integration, it says click to apply, you're gonna click that button, and then you're gonna click accept, okay? So it's just a little dual authorization there. Um, we don't give everyone that access right away, but um, we're you know really good with working with Socomac and a lot of these integrators get people approved very, very quick. So please click on that and get approved. And once you are approved, you're gonna see all of these icons illuminate, and then therefore you can dive right in and start modeling and adding energy storage to your opportunities. So that being said, let's kind of mosey on over to the energy storage arm here and let's click inside the integration. So once you click inside the Socomec integration, okay, this is what you're gonna see. So this landing page is pretty basic, pretty straightforward. We have our system cost right at the top. So once you're approved, okay, you're gonna get access to the Socomec pricing card, okay? It's gonna be right here within the integration. Just click that, it's gonna open up. You're gonna see exactly what's gonna to cost to order the hardware that you need for the project, pair it with the appropriately sized Acumen EMS controller, um, and also other options for extending your warranties. Um, and then from there, make sure you add on your additional margins, commissions, uh, anything else involved with the installation. Put in that final sales price right there, and then you guys are good to go. Moving down, we have our ESS designs. So in this dropdown, we have six options for you. Actually, we have a bit more than six now. We must add a few more. And these are gonna range from, on the small side, right? The Sunny Sys large scale that Chuck just went over, the 100 kilowatt 186. Okay, the two hour battery moving into the four. Then, like he explained, you know, the 500, two and the four hour options. Now, the cool thing about this is that when Chuck showed that great slide with all the different cam cabinet combinations and size combinations, it was a little bit daunting to understand what might be most appropriate. And because they're so scalable and the way the Socomec engineered these so well is that we put in a lot of the base systems and using our optimization engine, they could be scaled and quantified much larger to fit the mold to any sort of specific project needs that is in front of you. So once you decide that, um, you can actually click on the optimizer. So right over here, you'd say run ETB optimizer. And before you do this, make sure you select the base model of the design. So in this case, I went with the 100, 186. And I did that to show the scalability of these smaller systems. Then you want to definitely choose your control settings. This is where the Acumen EMS, right? Energy tool bases controls come into play. And what's going to be driving the economic behavior of this opportunity and pairing it with Socomax. So we have our Acumen EMS here with the demand charge management plus TOU arbitrage with no charge restrictions, right? The same strategy, charging from PV only. We have Acumen PV self-consumption. We have TOU arbitrage on its own, both charging from solar and with no charge restrictions. Now, when choosing your uh, controls, you always want to make sure you go back to the rate. Now, this is a really important aspect of this. So when we dive into the ALTOU rate, you want to make sure this, you, you want to exploit the financial opportunities of that rate tariff. So when you dive in, just really quick, let's review. Okay, ALTOU, just click right here. And when this window opens, you're going to click on View Rate Schedule. A new tab is going to open up. Then you can take a very granular look into the way the rate is constructed. So when I see perhaps um, a time of use energy charge and demand charge as well, I know that I want my controls to go after both of those angles. If we only have time of use energy, maybe no demand, I don't want to waste any battery effort going after those demand charges when we can be focusing our efforts on the TOU energy. Okay. So it's important to understand what the rate is telling you. And this is really kind of energy storage 101. And when you guys have questions with this, anybody out there, let me know, let Tracy know, reach out to your account managers. We'll be happy to set up a screen share and dive in uh, with you guys, make sure everything's looking good. So this is just a little hint, just as you're diving into the integration, understand the rate. And then from there, dive back into the integration, make sure you choose the appropriate um, strategy. So, after we are in here, we choose the design, we choose the appropriate control. So for this opportunity, I am gonna be going with uh, demand and TOU arbitrage, charging from PV only. And then when you click on this button here, you're gonna run the optimization engine. So what happens here is that we're gonna see this very first line item here, right? The 93 kilowatt 186, okay? Which is our 100, 186 here. Then we're gonna say, okay, if I build 
if I choose this one option and incorporate it into my project, I have a blended savings of $129.244. So that means that for every kilowatt hour of capacity this battery holds, um, we're gonna be saving our client this much money, right? It's a, it's a metric to understand the value that these bring to the table. Now on the optimization engine, the next level up is what if we were to stack two of these options, right? So our power rating 93 times two is gonna be 186, okay? And then our capacity doubles. So you can see, hey, our blended savings might drop a little bit, but we are actually gonna be saving more money. So you can see how that scales up and what might be the most appropriate size for this opportunity in front of you. So after you make that decision, you're gonna put in the final design quantity that you need. And as, as Chuck explained, these are all very, very scalable, right? So we can fit the mold to whatever specific battery storage uh, requirements that the project needs. Uh, whereas some other options um, out there in the field are kind of limiting, right? You can't get that very specific option. Uh, man, I just think Sokomek did a phenomenal job in the engineering and the foresight of these energy storage units to be so modular and so easily stackable. Um, so once that's good to go, we're gonna hit save, and then you're gonna see your readout of the project economics uh, for the battery. So we have our capacity, okay? We have our power rating, our final system cost, Okay, so 93 kilowatts, the annual cycles that the batteries will undergo in the scenario. For example, hey, we discharged 1, 16,031 kilowatt hours, out of which we lost 1,021 per system losses. Um, unfortunately, there's no you know, electronic or mechanical device in the world that will you know, take on energy and discharge it perfectly. You're gonna have some losses here and there. And in this particular scenario, we offset our exported energy by 35% which is great if you guys are working in certain markets where you need to be very conscious of what you're exporting to grid, um, charging that battery from excess PV gen and then redistributing that back could be a very valuable opportunity, especially moving into the California market and switching over to the NEM3, right? It could be very valuable. So if you have any questions on that, please let us know. The big thing I want to show you here is the blended savings, $129. Now for frame of reference, we would consider something to be a valuable opportunity, about $45 of blended savings and higher, okay? So to see one here at 129 is very, very valuable. It's a good cost benefit opportunity for these batteries to be incorporated into the project. And then moving on down, we have our costs and incentives, right? So just kind of edit your selected incentives. We see we have uh, for SoCal Edison right here, our step five SGIP, our uh, straight line depreciation on the state level, our ITC, than 100% bonus depreciation. So after we move forward and we um, get our battery ready to go and you go out there in the field and you guys make a sale, the next step is closing the deal. So once you guys close that deal, we make it as simple as possible with a single PO process. And we wanna make sure that everything goes as easy and smooth as possible with our customer success team. So our customer success team uh, will be communicating with Sokomac making sure that we procure all the hardware for you, get everything ready to go and deliver to your client, and we help you out every step of the way. So it really couldn't be any easier for our users to design, purchase, and deliver energy storage to your customers. And furthermore, um, Socomet's great because we have those um, islanding and microgrid options, um, which is becoming more and more important as these markets kind of evolve. So when you have those needs, please let us know, and we're happy to help you out and coordinate with Socomet and get that delivered on over to you. Now, after you make that purchase and we coordinate with Socomac, we get it delivered, it's installed, it's operational, you want to make sure that you're able to monitor that asset. And in doing so, we have our ETB monitor. Now, we've been working on this for a long time and we're getting it out and deployed into the market. We're super excited about this. Um, so this comes free when you purchase ETB Acumen controls. And a couple high-level overviews of what you get with ETB monitor is that you get a single site a portfolio or a fleet view. So if you're deploying a lot of these assets in the field, hey, if you wanna just look at one site on its own, you can 100% do that. You can look at these assets as a fleet. So if you have many operating under the same proposal right, or the same project rather, and you can look at it as an entire portfolio view. So a lot of different levels there. Um, we have a lot of ongoing alerts and status updates. So these are all configurable within ETB Monitor. So you can control what alerts and things that you wanna receive. 
Um, so it just kind of keeps you up to date what's happening in the field and you can manage all these notifications and your settings. Monitors 24 seven, obviously. Um, and also there's a lot of manual overrides that you can choose to do. So for example, if you want to deviate away from a, a charge and discharge strategy that Acumen is going to be undergoing, you can have a manual override to force a discharge during certain windows. There's certain um, incentives out there, like the Hawaii uh, EDRP would have a forced discharge for a few hours in the afternoon. That might deviate a little bit from the economic dispatch, but by doing so would qualify us to participate in that specific program. So those are all absolutely available to you. And what's really cool about this too, is that looking at the ETV rate schedules and bill calculation algorithms, it'll show you in real time, like what are we saving this client? Okay, so up to date, hey, we are producing X amount of energy, we're charging and discharging here, what is our real time savings? And the interface is very similar to the ETV developer UI, we want to keep everything consistent, so that it's a very seamless uh, kind of transition over from one platform to the other. A lot of interactive graphs, real-time data, and obviously you can export that data as well for any sort of reporting that might needed for any sort of incentive compliance. Now, once you are approved with the integration, okay, you're gonna be getting an email, as Tracy mentioned earlier, and in the email, you're gonna get a uh, FAQ, some really commonly asked questions um, about Socomac. So look for this once you guys are approved for the integration, and you're gonna get that welcome email as well. Um, so after we have this ready to go, the next thing I wanna show you is transactions, okay? And when you are gonna be building a, an opportunity using our Acumen EMS, it's always important to incorporate the cost of that EMS as well into your financial model. Now the price here, right, that we uh, put forth on the pricing card would reflect both in hardware from Socomac and our EMS cost to purchase it, just add your margins, put that final cost in and then you're ready. But we want to make sure that we reflect that cost in the um, financial model as well, because you get 10 years of Acumen controls. But if you want to renew the lifespan of the batteries and add another layer of uh, EMS authorization, you got to put in what the expected cost would be to renew that license to operate the batteries. So in your account, you're going to see this ETB Acumen EMS. Okay, you're going to see that dropped into your uh, transaction list. Super simple, we built it all very dynamic. All you do is you click on it, add it. It's gonna bake in that cost automatically depending on what system that you ended up putting into your energy storage aspect of the project. So it couldn't be easier, very streamlined. Again, I know I'm going quick. If anybody has any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to us. So for this example, we have our PV system at $2.90 per watt. We have the Socomac, I added some margin in here as well. Uh, I think I added like a 25 or 30% margin on top of the purchase cost. So we're sitting at about $814 per kilowatt hour. Got all of our incentives loaded for both PV and storage. And we're looking at a 3.1 year payback. This is out of the California market, um, very uh, valuable for the PV plus storage, and especially moving into NEM3, PV plus storage will be even more valuable, um, especially the storage. So man, it's nothing to shake a stick at. 3.1 years, a phenomenal payback an IRR of 26.6%. So once we get all of these loaded and ready to go, let's go ahead and open up our document and just do a quick review. Let's get down to the cash flow, and then we're going to look to wrap it up. So when we open this document, and also for you, those of you that are not super familiar with ETB, our transactions are super customizable. Any financial model you might need, just let us know, we'll help you build. And all these documents are very customizable as well. So here we have an example of what could be just really quickly customized, right? So I just kind of popped in some nice little, uh, some pics here of our, our friends over there at Socomac. Okay, then moving down, we have table of contents, our project summary, right? Our notes, uh, financial outputs of project economics, right? Details about your PV system, details about this energy storage system. So here we can see that we have our battery banks, which is our SunSys HES large, right, which is 100 kilowatt, 186 kWh. Here's our all-in cost. Here's all of our incentives. For this example, if that system costs 151, all right, our net cost is $36,000. List of all the rebates and incentives. Then eventually, we're going to get on down to the cash flow. So our all-in project cost, PV plus solar, 300,902. 
you have the option with that acumen uh, transaction that i mentioned to put in any sort of pv operation and maintenance costs and you know replacement costs for the inverters and any sort of annual sort of maintenance uh, i put in all zeros just for this example but more importantly we have our acumen license renewal so again comes with 10 years right out the gate and for this size system it was estimated uh, for replacement cost at year 11 of 13,333 most likely 10 years from now that cost would be lower so if anything it'd be a more conservative approach to these project economics but moving forward looking like in this example year four our client will be making $41,000 profit with this investment over a span of 20 years making out over $800,000 so I appreciate everybody um, paying attention and sticking with us for this last segment of our Sokomac integration uh, webinar. And uh, if anybody has any questions, please feel free to drop me an email, uh, get hold of Tracy. We'll connect you guys with your account managers. And uh, thank you so much. And Tracy, I will pass it back to you. All right. I will pass things over quickly to Kevin once I um, share my screen back. And uh, Matt, if you could just give me a heads up that you see uh, the PowerPoint, that would be great. Yep, I got you. Perfect. Okay, awesome. Thanks, Tracy, and uh, thank you, Matt. Um, I just wanted to speak for uh, a quick second on these systems. I've been working for a while with Chuck, kind of getting everything dialed in on the um, ETV developer site. Um, as kind of Matt highlighted there, we uh, wanted to simplify it uh, for the users. Uh, Sokomic has a pretty long list of configurations. So what we did is kind of boil it down to those smaller systems that you can select. And if you need something that's 300 kW, 400, 350, whatever it may be, find a um, just multiple of one of those existing systems that are on there. Um, and model your system based on that. Uh, in terms of footprint, though, um, just got to remember that you won't be thinking of it as a matter of there's going to be, you know, three of the same setups next to each other, as kind of Chuck had had highlighted. It's a matter of however many C cabs combined with however many B cabs. Um, and this is something that you know we're going to be there to to support as you guys are working through. Uh, these projects and kind of designing what your uh, what your end customer needs. We'll be able to provide the details of um, whatever the configuration might look like, um, and there might even be some ability to find some configurations that you can't necessarily get to um, that we can kind of help you uh, model in a more custom way. Um, outside of that, uh, just wanted to mention that uh, you know I, I work on the operations team here and I work also closely with um, with Susan on our ETB customer um, success team uh, whenever you get to kind of that point of working through a project with an account manager and you're ready to move forward we'll be highly involved in uh, helping you guys kind of through the process providing kind of those detailed technical documents uh, for the sale and kind of ushering through the um, logistics side of things um, and uh, you know working through kind of lead times. It's definitely been a challenge with uh, the supply chain as of late. So just make sure when you're, uh, when you're planning these systems, you're, uh, you're asking those questions up front and really setting your customers' expectations for, for lead times as kind of, you know, the whole industry is, is dealing with it. Um, and we'll just be as transparent as possible when it comes to, uh, you know, getting these things deployed. I think that's about it that I had. Um, I toss it over to Tracy and we'll go over some of your questions. All right, thank you, Kevin. Yeah, we do have quite a few questions that I want to get to. Um, we have 10 minutes till the top of the hour, so we will take it. Um, a lot of questions, um, you know, during your section, Chuck, so I want to kind of throw those over to you. Um, we talked about this a couple times, um, but, um, you and you did cover it on one slide but it's good to kind of talk about again someone asked what's the kwh range low to high if you could kind of address that chuck what hour is nameplate 
up to multi megawatt hours. And if you have something that's, you know, tens of megawatt hours, we want to talk to you about that too. Could you quickly repeat that, Chuck? I think you were on mute for the first part of it. Oh, sorry. Uh, so the, the range is as small as 186 kilowatt hours up to multi megawatt hours. And if you have a project that's tens of megawatt hours, we want to talk with you about that as well. All right, thank you. I will throw this one to you again, Chuck. Can you talk about temperature limitations and how the units are cooled, which I think we did touch on earlier? Yeah, so it's a it's a variety of, uh, so some are liquid cooled, uh, some are the, the smaller converter is, uh, is air cooled uh, behind some very elaborate filters. The temperature range is uh, plus 45 C uh, to minus 20. Uh, we'll probably go even colder uh, in the near future. So you got something down to minus 30 C, uh, we'll let us know. Uh, but uh, for today, minus 20 to plus 45. Great, thank you. Um, I think this is kind of towards Matt and Kevin. Uh, we did have a couple questions on this. Um, so essentially with these systems, um, do we buy the ESS from Energy Toolbase? And is like once a contract is signed, who's the main communication um, um, from getting it modeled to getting the system deployed? Yeah, I can, uh, I can jump in on that, Matt. Um, we're we're working. We've been kind of working through um, this relationship with Sokomec, and and just for ease um, of purchase for the developer, we we've worked out a way where it's just a single PO through Energy Toolbase. So you go through and do your modeling in the platform, work with your account manager, and kind of dialing in exactly what you need for your project. And then one PO uh, submitted to Energy Toolbase, where we'll manage um, that kind of bridged relationship to Sokomec and and you know, continue to relay the the delivery information and, and essentially put the uh, the endpoints together. Um, but from there, you know, at that point, it'll be, as I had mentioned before, myself and the operations team, along with Susan and the customer success team, that'll be working closely with um, the developers out there uh, through that process and, you know, shepherding through any kind of questions as uh, as you're getting your permits and and looking to move to deployment. Thank you, Kevin. Anything to add, Matt? No, um, sounded perfect, Kevin. Um, and, and just really reinforcing that we, we really strive with this relationship with, with Sokomec to make it as easy as possible. Um, so I hope everybody here can see that. And um, hey, you know, otherwise, you know, working with separate hardware vendors and trying to understand, hey, who do I match up this with the EMS? And there's a lot of things to do. So um, just what Kevin said, just making it so simple and, and as easy as we can. So. But yeah, you can communicate just with ETB and, and we'll handle it from there. Thank you, Matt. Um, a couple, I'm going to put these two in one. Um, what are kind of the application requirements? Because, you know, users have to click that logo um, in ETB developer and then kind of an approval timeline. Just how long is it expected to take if somebody wants to start modeling these projects as quickly as possible? Yeah. So, Matt, uh, yeah, that's a good one for you. Yeah, great question. Um, so really, I mean, obviously, when we're going through the approval process, um, we want to make sure, obviously, you know, there's the, the users are actual developers. Um, so really, the requirements would be, hey, you modeling in the you know commercial space. If there's a residential applicant for commercial integration, it probably wouldn't do you much good. You could probably get approved anyways. Um, but really, um, almost everybody that applies will get approved, and um, the approval is pretty quick. So usually, we have the same day approval. And if it ever happens to be a little bit longer, just reach out to your, your account manager. We'll make sure we push that through. Thanks, Matt. Chuck, I'm gonna, we, we, Kevin did kind of talk about this and we've been touching on it, but can we talk a little bit about like the lead times on products um, just for timeline purposes, Chuck? Yes, because there's a lot of energy storage stuff with beautiful brochures that you can't get any of. So that's a very good question. Uh, so we have a multi-year supply agreement with CATL, and of course we have our own factories to make inverters. Uh, we will commit to 24-week lead time from, from PO. Uh, so orders uh, taken during October will be delivering in uh, you know, spring of next year. Now, 
that's a minimum. Um, there will be bad, there will be uh, systems in stock, and you know the modular nature lends itself to to late fulfillment. So if you've got a project that's a couple of months out, uh, you know you, you you need you need something. Let us know, uh, but we will commit to 24 weeks, and uh, we'll do our best to go faster. Thank you, Chuck. Another one that came in later um, is Sokomex set up for California SGIP PDP reporting. Ah, happy news. You can go look on the publicly visible SGIP report and see all 34 of these configurations listed on the SGIP website. Good news. Thank you, Chuck. Um, Matt, I want to we did have a couple questions today about um, just knowing who your account manager is with Energy Toolbase. Um, how does how does somebody find that out? Maybe they just haven't been, you know, talking with their account manager much. They use the platform, but where is a good place to go and, and find that information? Yeah, thanks, Tracy. Uh, great question. So this is actually available right through your Energy Toolbase um, login. So if you log into the portal, when you go over to your settings, it will actually tell you who your account manager is. Um, and it'll also provide you their contact information. Um, so if you have any trouble navigating to that point and you're not sure, um, on our main website, you can just click on contact us. It goes to our main inbox and just ask, hey, here's my company name, who's my account manager? We'll get right back to you with their contact info. Great, thank you. Chuck, one just came in for you. Um, what, um, which one of the products can Island, um, is it all of them or only above a certain size? they can all island thank you short and sweet that's what we like <laughs> um okay and um and then the average uh somebody did ask what is the average installation time of the system i, I think that might go to kevin and or chuck i'll, I'll take that one they, they go in relatively quickly so uh we're where you know when you buy the system, we're we're gonna give you the installation manuals in advance. We're gonna give you a pre-commissioning checklist, so you or your your builder can say you know before they before they you know before the commissioning date, all these things are going to happen. So you're gonna pour a pad, let it set, drill the holes, put the bolts in, you know, bolt the thing down, and then a Sokomec technician will come out for commissioning, and we'll be there to. Uh, you know, wake everything up, establish communications with the mothership, make sure the thing is talking with Energy Toolbase, for example, and, and then we're going to provide you a commissioning report afterwards. Um, as far as the installation time, uh, once the pad is poured, a, a, a day or two should be all it takes, but most of these in, it's, there's not that much to it. All right, thank you, Chuck. Um... I'm gonna throw one more at you, Chuck, just because we're getting to the top of the hour and this is one that came in earlier. Are both inverter cabinets listed for UL 1741 CRD? Yes, or or, or rather they will be publicly listed. Uh, the, the testing is complete. Um, there's still some work to get it to pop up on, uh, for example, the California Energy Commission list for most of you are gonna look for this. So the tests are done, the tests are passed. Uh, just give us another couple of weeks until it's uh, visible on the CEC list. And uh, and Tracy, we didn't talk about warranties. If there's time, we yes, we did. That, that was my next question. We had a we ah, had two or three, good. so that just came in. So can we talk about warranties and guarantees on um, the ESS okay. systems? Okay. So um, complete system converters plus batteries, uh, three year warranty out of the box. Most customers are going to want ten years and. Uh, Matt and Kevin are talking about a 10-year software license. That's because many of the incentive programs require 10 years, and if they don't, the lenders do. So uh, there's a 10-year warranty extension, and that includes Sokomec technicians coming out uh, for some of the more uh, complex maintenance activities, uh, like at year five, for example. Uh, but for the most part, this thing is designed that uh, you know you as a PV installer or your builder uh, can do much of the uh, the annual routine maintenance. And we'll come out and do the maintenance uh, for the big ones. And you've got uh, full coverage for 10 years. Thank you so much. Well, we just hit the top of the hour. We actually got um, through a lot of the questions, mostly all of them, I think, which is good. Um, if you guys have any other questions, please don't hesitate. You can reach out to any of our webinar speakers. They'd be happy to talk with you. Um, and then if you are an ETB developer user, 
please contact your account manager. They can set up a one-on-one -on -one meeting with you. Um, and if you haven't yet applied to use the integration, we uh, please apply today. Um, we are super excited to have that logo up and uh, you should get a turnaround approval time in just a, a day or so. So you should be ready to model those soon. And um, thank you to everybody for being on. Thank you to all the speakers for taking some time out of your day. Uh, we are excited to get this integration launched. You can uh, be on the lookout for an email from us that will have the webinar recording, the slide deck, and it will have a couple links, including that 14-day free trial for ETB developer if you are not yet a user, which you will have full access to the integration during that free trial. And um, I just want to say thank you again to our speakers, and um, please let us know if you have any questions, and have a great day, everybody. Thank you, Tracy. Thanks, Matt. Thank Thanks, Kevin. Thank you all. Yep. Thanks, Tracy. Thanks, Kevin and Chuck. Have a great day, guys. Thank you.